Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your thankful to be alive uh, host here, Calvin Timms. You can find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin. You can find my co-host, Dale, over on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. And thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry there hasn't been an update um, earlier in the week. Uh, last Friday, when we were supposed to record this episode, I got a nasty cold, flu, something. I don't even know. All I know is it wasn't COVID. I took a test and it was negative. Uh, but then it lingered until about today. Well, yesterday slash today. Uh, been hacking up a long the last couple days. So, you know, four or five days later, still kind of recovering a little bit. But, you know, ha- couldn't go too long without getting you guys something um, and this one was one I was really excited about, unfortunately, <laughs> that uh, we'll, we'll try and still, you know, so it is coming out Friday. Um, normally, we're trying to do Monday through Thursday, but um, I'm probably just going to do a couple of uploads here this weekend, you know, maybe two tomorrow or two today on Friday when you're listening to this one, maybe two on Saturday, just to kind of get you some hype before you go into the Super Bowl this weekend. So, that said, thank you guys again. Uh, I'm sorry we weren't able to to hit Monday, but um, I'm feeling a lot better. So I'm excited for what we've got next week as well. So I didn't want to push this off an entire week. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, it's all important. You know, there is no off season in Dynasty. So uh, I just wanted to get you guys as much content as we could. Dale, how you doing today? I am feeling much better than you are. So I, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm very excited to talk about what stuff we got going. Yeah, we'll see if, uh, we'll see, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, um, while if, while you're watching on YouTube, if you could like, comment, subscribe, whatever it is that you want, you feel good doing on the video just to help it out. That'd be appreciated. If you're just listening, you probably won't notice, but if you're watching the video, um, you'll probably see times during this recap where I'm going to mute myself and just be hacking up a lung on camera, but you know, it is what it is. Hopefully I'll be able to block myself with the draft board. Um, but you know, you might be able to see a glimpse or two of me hacking up a lung. So Dale's going to have to carry me in this one. This is my Jordan game, but, um, speaking of Jordan, still the goat, just going to put that out there, you know, Still, still the go. Uh, but that said, Dale, before we get into this, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Um, I, m- my heart wants the Chiefs, but my head says the Eagles. So basically, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go with the Eagles on this one, and I'm probably going to go with the leaked NFL script that they're going to win by a field. <laughs> I actually think they're going to win by a field goal just because it's going to be a tight game. Like, yes, I didn't, yes, I don't even I know this whole the script thing is so ridiculous. It's like so it stupid. Is. It, 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 it really is. <laughs> the funniest one to me was the one where uh, uh, the the leak of um, Alex Smith. <laughs> the, oh yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen to me yeah. in a week? <laughs> oh, I'm going to yeah. lose my leg and almost die. Great. Sounds good. Pretty Thanks, much. NFL. <laughs> All right, so. Today, what we got for you, the reason why I didn't want to push this off too much, um, I, for you guys, have taken a bullet. I've already done a startup draft, and, um, you know, it was a cheaper league. It wasn't a a, a free league, so um, it's not small money, but it's not no money, you know? So, uh, it's yeah, it's kind of the nice, perfect middle ground where people are, are more willing to experiment, you know, be a little bit more crazy, which you get a lot more with those cheaper leagues or the free leagues where, oh, I don't care if I go and blow five first round picks for a player. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's not one of those super stringy, um, strict high dollar leagues where everyone's trying to nickel and dime every pick. It can be excruciating Exhausting. in some of those. Yeah. So, you know, the draft itself can be almost worse, like days. a job, right? Yes. So, days and um, days. This one is a perfect middle ground, and I wanted, luckily enough for me, I was right in the middle of the draft, so, you know, I got the opportunity to really experiment early um, and and kind of feel the board out, but there were some shocking things that happened in this one. Um, It's a super flex, so real quick, we'll lay it out. It's a super flex, um, two running backs, two wide receivers. Um, Let me see, actually, how many flex do we have in this one? I forget. Uh... Three flex, one tight end. It is a 
Um, so it's super flex. It's it's 1.75 tight end premium. And then also additionally, the running backs have a 0.2 point per carry. So it's pretty much the the jack of all leagues. It's got everything you could ask for. So um, the reason why I like this one so much that I wanted to share it with you guys is because it's the most balanced version you could get of all because it has all the settings every position is going to be prioritized almost like there's no settings you know but um the the good news is you can kind of take these guys you know whatever player position let's say you have three wide receivers well okay you kind of you see where the the wide receivers starting to fall maybe bump them up a little bit over some of these other guys but um you know you take the point per carry out and it's not going to change much at all. You take tight end premium out, you know, you push all these guys down maybe a round or two, but not crazily in this one. People did not go uh, hard enough, in my opinion, on some of the tight ends. So this one has literally everything you could ask for, and it's just a very good range of, of values, kind of what the community is thinking about these guys going into 2023. So, um, Dale, kick us off. What are your first thoughts? So, um, everybody watching on YouTube, I encourage you guys to go check this one out on YouTube, regardless of me hacking up along, but, um, we have a draft board that you can see on the video here and, you know, I was pick number six. So mm-hmm. kind of the, the worst spot in my opinion, because you're not getting one of those elite quarterbacks and, you know, number six is right where the top five guys really go off the board. And seven was Justin Fields. So one through six was Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. Um, anything crazy. There was no trades actually in the first five picks, which is, you know, always a hit or miss in a startup. But yes. it al- it always feels like guys in the top three are always trying to trade down. Nobody actually mm-hmm. did in this one. So what are your thoughts on on the first half of this round here? Um, I, I would I would say that's pretty standard, honestly. Um, I mean you can really put those guys in those guys in really any order you would want. And I think you'd be very happy with them. Um, I mean, I'm not, Oh, I mean, I, I, I know Jalen hurts is Jalen hurts this year, but I'm still a skeptic, a, a mild skeptic, but you know, I mean, I mean for his value right now, I think, I think all of those guys are very well bound. So, I mean, honestly, I, 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 I would say the top, top, top 12 guys are, all, all, all pretty well, pretty good. Um, I mean, I mean, the it's it's the biggest thing is is the kicker at one eleven. And that's gonna <laughs> so, be the yeah. So real quick before we get down that far. Um, so at six, this is where the first thing uh, really started. So yeah, the the biggest thing was I was actually at at six, and and you know, looking at Justin Jefferson, I like Justin Jefferson a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to trade back and honestly, I will say the trade probably is not worth it in the grand scheme of things. But that said, I had to get the ball rolling for it. And, um, the biggest thing for, for startup drafts for me is you have to be one, you have to have a strategy for your, for your early picks. And we're going to go through the first four rounds here first, and then we're kind of going to, going to kind of do some of the mid rounds and then touch on some of the late rounds later. Um, but you know, the biggest thing for entering the first couple rounds is having a strategy and then sticking to it. So, you know, I don't love the value of Justin Jefferson at six. When you miss out on all those top quarterbacks, you're not trading Justin Jefferson for Justin Herbert, right? Or Joe Burrow or Justin Fields. It's just, yep. it's not going to happen. So um, I didn't feel comfortable taking fields that high. I thought that I could, you know, s- springboard my value of trading back. I tried to trade back the best I could um, where I'm not trading back too far in the first round. And I think that's the biggest thing. So I did trade back to the 2-1. Um, I got a future 2024 second round pick. Now it's going to be a high second. This guy is not very competitive. Um easy to say like the guy's try actively trying to rebuild like he he did not stick to a strategy early i will say he corrected later on where you know he kind of was aggressive early didn't get the guys that he really wanted so then he pivoted and started to sell those guys in the draft which was pretty wild to see right so um i was able to trade back for to the 2-1 so six draft spots for a future second probably a high second 
Um, it's still crapshoot because we haven't played any games yet. So it's not necessarily the, the best value when, when we talk about who I got there. You know, C.D. Lamb for Justin Jefferson, a second is not going to get that, that that trade done, right? So that's where it feels mm-hmm. a little unnecessary. But where the, the benefit of that was, in my opinion, you can talk on this, on, on your perspective on it, I now have an extra second round pick in this draft for free, basically. To get a player of, of similar value, right? Um, and I was able to just pick up an extra second. And it allowed me to have more flexibility to trade back further later on. And it gives me more just capital to, to, to go and get guys when I want to go and get them, right? You know, And we'll mm-hmm. talk here in the fourth round. There was actually a trade where I used one of those seconds. Because I this wasn't the only trade that I did. But um, I got a few extra second round picks. I was able to use one to go get my guy in that round. And, uh, you know... I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't traded back here. So, you know, it's kind of a give and take a little bit. You know, you're giving up a little bit on the top end, but you're getting a little bit more back later on. So as I was the first trade here, what what were your thoughts there? Uh, I don't mind that because, you know, I I do think it's a downgrade from Jefferson to Lamb and then getting a second. But, you know, I think think you did set yourself up pretty good uh, uh, because you did have more flexibility than... Than the other guy that you traded with who lost that flex right away right so so you know I, I i think it was a pretty even trade you know overall like i mean i don't think it was a bad trade by any, you know so i mean I, I i would i would give that trade for both of you like a solid you know you know like seven out of ten because i feel it works for both of you guys yeah, so we'll keep going here. So Justin Jefferson was number six, taken right in front of Justin Fields. Jamar Chase was 108. Um, Jefferson over Chase. Are you still down with that? Do you think Chase should be 101? or? I think I would still go Jefferson cause, because of the other weapons in Cincinnati. Um, I mean, I, I mean yeah. as, long as, as long as T. Higgins is still there, you know, I think that does depreciate some of Chase's value, but, I mean, he's still... He's still in consideration. I mean, I, I mean, personally, me, I would rather have Jefferson, but, um, but you know, I mean, it's, it's to each their own there. Yeah, that's fair. And full transparency too. one last piece of information on this startup. We started this at the beginning of playoffs, so it was very early on in the run. Um, so, you know, the, the Trevor Lawrence was the next pick. So he was one Oh nine, went in front of Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson, um, was a little surprising, but it was like l- literally the the same weekend as the Chargers comeback win over, or uh, right. I guess the the uh, Jaguars comeback Jaguars. win over the char- Chargers. So there's a little bit of a, a bias in that. Do you think this is too high on Trevor Lawrence? Do you think? How do you feel about that? Over, I was a little surprised he went over Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson. Um, I can get behind him a- ahead of Dak Prescott, but. The other three just feel like they have such a higher ceiling. Well, I, f- I feel with Murray, I'm really worried about his injury and how that's going to affect a lot of his a lot of his future. Um, you know, with him being as small as he is, having that injury, I don't think that bodes well for him. Um, I mean, I, I probably would have picked, like, Lamar Jackson, maybe Deshaun Watson, but with how Watson played this last year, it, it, it wasn't, it, like, that. that scares me. So, I mean, I, I I would feel Lawrence would probably be better, probably, you know, probably like around where Sean Watson was picked. I would feel more comfortable like at, at yeah. the 2-6. You know, I, I would feel more comfortable with that, but I wouldn't be against picking him at like, you know, 2-3. Yeah, yep, I would agree with that. It, I, I get the Kyler thing. I'd probably rather have Lawrence than Kyler. I think Kyler does yes, have a higher ceiling still. Um, especially, you know, yes. if they get a new quarterback in or a new, uh, head coach in there ever mm-hmm. eventually. Um, uh, but Lamar, it's tough for me to, to justify Lawrence over Lamar, even with the I landing agree. spot unknown. Um, but yeah, that is kind of what it is. So Kyler Murray was one ten. the, like you mentioned the first kicker, which is the first rookie draft pick, the one Oh one was the one eleven. So that is shocking to me because that is such a reach on the pick. Um, and that's one thing, the very consistent trend you'll see with all these rookie picks. Until really a right around the like 110 to maybe the 2-6, that's where they're kind of in the right range in my opinion. 
these guys went so freaking early. Like, I get it. Brees Hall, or not Brees Hall, but Bijan Robinson is a very exciting player. Are you telling me that you, in a super flex league, you can trade Bijan for Lamar Jackson straight up? There's no chance in hell. You're just taking a loss on that pick, right? And, okay, let's say you don't go Bijan Robinson. It gives you a little bit of flexibility. That's great. But you're going to go Bryce Young over Lamar Jackson? That's wild to me. You know what I mean? So I know it's close. We're, it's not egregious, but I just think the value of the other guys that were still on the board, you know, Bijan Robinson or CeeDee Lamb, Bijan or A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddle. I'd rather have all of those guys over him. And, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about the – if you've listened to our any of our videos so far, wide receivers – there's no chance that I'm taking Jason over any of these guys, you know, even if, if he was the 101. But, yeah, it, the, 10, the 111 for the 101 rookie draft. It's wild. That is so high. Um, so, so high. Then we had Lamar Jackson at 12. And this one was actually a trade, but it wasn't originally a trade. Um, I was trying to find the trade details on this one, but – it was one that happened after the um, the draft started, so mm-hmm. I can't really find the details on it. Um, oh, here we go. So, you know, he gave up this pick, so Lamar Jackson and a 10th round, um, which ended up being... Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. So Lamar Jackson and Dalvin Cook for... Um, Dak Prescott, uh, who else was it? Um, this is hard to do on the fly, but uh, it was, oh, Juju Smith-Schuster and then a first round pick next year. I think it's pretty close to, to worth it in value. Um, you're getting a wide receiver later on versus Dalvin Cook, who's kind of toast at this point in his career. Mm -hmm. And then you're also getting, you're going from Lamar to Dak and I don't think, it's a first worth of value there. So um, I actually like that trade quite a bit. But again, it wasn't a trade at the time. Um, at the time, the guy had uh, just taken Lamar Jackson, and it was the Dynasty Dad guy, um, <laughs> which left me on the clock at the 2-1. I tried to trade back again. Wasn't able to find something that I really liked there. You know, I was getting offers for like fifth-round picks, and that's just too far of a drop, you know. Um, yeah. If you're not... Like, I think some of them were, if I remember right, some of the offers were like a fifth round pick and a first. And it's like, eh, it's not going to cut it here. You know, the, the, the quality of player is just not, it's not the there. same that far down. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I felt really good about getting CD lamb and especially, I know it's not three wide receiver, but you know, we've been talking all off season, how we've really pivoted to wide receivers and, and you know, quarterbacks over running backs um, yep. in the startups and in in our team construction and everything. So, you know, I did take CD Lamb over AJ Brown. CD's just he's just so good, man. I just need Dallas to not be stupid and feature him. But yeah. I'm a little nervous for next year. I guess we'll find out now that we <laughs> we've got they've gotten rid of Kellen mm-hmm. Moore. But you know, I don't really love Kellen Moore either. So right. What are your thoughts? Would you rather have AJ Brown or CD Lamb? I, that, that's what I was about to ask. I think personally, I would rather have AJ Brown. Um, I mean, I think CD Lamb has a more solid floor because they need him for the offense to run compared to, you know, AJ Brown. Like they have Devonta Smith. Like they yeah. have the running backs. The biggest thing Jalen Hurts. The but... biggest thing for me, and the, this is the reason why. So, you know, after trading back from the one six, I kind of established my my draft strategy to not go for it this year, to get young players with upside, right? And honestly, the biggest difference between CeeDee Lamb and A.J. Brown is CeeDee Lamb is 23 years old, A.J. Brown is 25 years old, and I have those guys in the exact same tier in my rankings, back-to-back, three and four. I actually have A.J. Brown higher um, at three, but, you know, I think that the, the two years saved when you're not going for a competition this year Um, was huge for me so that's why I kind of punted on you know I picked Lamb over Brown but again I have those guys back to back in my ranking so that was ultimately the strategy that I started to go with early in this in this one yeah 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 on that strategy you know I think that was good because you were trying to pick 
I mean, I, 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 w I would feel it would depend if you got somebody at the one six. I mean, I mean, I know you traded that traded back, but you know, if, if, if you had somebody already that was that, that you were going to compete with this year, I think you probably would have picked different. Yeah. Yep. So, um, two, three was the one Oh two incredibly egregious on this price, like way too high. Uh, again, assuming even if you take out Bijan Robinson, you just took Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, one of these other guys over Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, Jalen Waddle. That is just such an egregious pick there. Um, I cannot get behind that whatsoever. Jalen Waddle at two, four. I don't hate it. Um, you know, he's young. I get it. Um, Brees Hall at the two, five. I don't love that because of the injury. Um, uh -oh. Deshaun Watson at the two six. So that was actually a pretty good pickup by this guy. He ended up with through two rounds with fields and Watson. That's pretty solid stacking of yes, the quarterbacks there. Yes, um, the two seven we talked about just now with the trade. Uh, originally that was nerd boy. So originally this was my pick and I was able mm -hmm. to trade it out. Um, again, because I was able to trade back from the one six, I had that extra second round pick. I already had C.D. Lamb. I was, you know, Dak Prescott was on the board, but then Tua was the next quarterback. Trey Lance, Russell Wilson, these other guys didn't really love the quarterback yeah. options. Didn't I wanted to take Kyle Pitts, but I was able to hold off on taking him. And basically, it was all you know, Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross, St. Brown. I already had C.D. Lamb. I felt good about one wide receiver. Didn't really want to take another one this early, so. I thought the value was definitely there in trading back. Um, and this is where I was able to, uh, I was able to pick up another second round pick and trade back from the two, seven to the three, one. So again, another half round, another second round pick. And again, it's not the best value, but it's something now I, now going into round three, I have, you know, I have two extra second round picks for next year. No extra mm -hmm. first again, Honestly, it probably should have been two first there to trade the, yes. that big of a gap, but yep. people yep. were very, very frugal in this one. So, you know, had to take what I could get because I didn't want to take these guys anyway here. So, um, mm -hmm. so ended up trading back, but then Dak Prescott here, Jonathan Taylor at the two eight, the two or the one three at two nine. Again, it, it we're getting w worse and worse yeah. as yeah. we yeah. as we on, keep going on, on on these rookie picks. Like, do you think people were panicking a little bit and we're kind of like it it definitely happens um for yes. sure because you know people definitely want to get them but i think part of the problem was especially right here the the rookie pick is enticing it, because yes. of the the you know the draft mindset where I have to get young guys, I have to get young guys and you're looking in the next guys off the board Kenneth Walker, Christian McCaffrey, um Amon Ross, St. Brown, oh. Kyle Pitts Wilson, Wilson like it, there's not a yeah. lot of youth there um but it doesn't mean you gotta you gotta reach on a rookie pick you know that's kind of the problem um now it here's where it could be interesting let's say that Stroud um is on the board there at one three in the rookie draft I could kind of get behind that you know it's a little early for him an I, unknown I rookie, but yeah. you could get Anthony Richardson or CJ Stroud. It gives you a little mm -hmm. bit of flexibility there. So I don't completely hate it. You could go Jameer Gibbs and it's not terrible. Um, again, we're not super egregious in terms of value, but we're definitely reaching on these guys uh, about a half a round, maybe in ahead of where they should be, maybe a round ahead of where they should be. Yeah. Um, so that's the only problem there. Um, CMC at 210. Kenneth Walker, 211, Amon Ross St. Brown finished out the second round there. That left me at the 3 1, and that's where I was able to get Kyle Pitts. And this was crazy to me because Kyle Pitts at 3 1 and a tight end premium. And I get it. He was very mm -hmm. disappointed this last year, but Marcus Mariota did not throw the ball at all. Kyle Pitts is 22 years old, man. He is 22 years old. He still has like a decade to figure it out. Like that was at kind least. of the, the most egregious thing. And people in the chat were giving me crap about taking him here at three one. But what are your thoughts? I, I think that's the perfect spot. Um, I, I was doing a startup last year and I picked him at one eleven, And 
I, I feel I would feel much better about my team if I picked him at three one compared to one eleven or like the turn on the second, you know, in the in the second round, like a lot of drafts went. You know, I feel a lot better at that price compared to the price last year. And I I, I honestly feel it's a discount with the tight end pre. Yeah, I I man, I was thinking about taking him at two one and I was able to get him around yes, later. Yes, and it's just yes. you know, I yes. was ecstatic. I hundred percent agree with that. Hundred percent agree. So you know, the one thing too, and as we kind of go through this, um, the biggest thing that I was able to do in this <laughs> was, sorry, excuse me while I cough real quick. I Basically, all the guys that I have are the all upside players because they're guys that used to be valued so much more highly, and they've kind of just fallen down the board a little bit more naturally to where they're, they feel right, you know? And I just got massive values, it felt like, on all these guys. So um, that said, Garrett Wilson uh, at 3-2, um, Tyree Kill at 3-3, three, three, Saquon Barkley 3-4, Tua at 3-5. That one was pretty crazy to me because um, we really didn't see much. Like, Tua still wasn't cleared from the concussion protocol mm-hmm. at this time when he was taken. And I was like, man, that just... Ooh, that, that, it's risky to me, you know. That yeah. that was the only thing that worried me a little bit about that. Um, then three six was my pick. I was able to trade that one as well. Um, again, not all the. This isn't the the guy that picked here. Nerd boy takes. He was not actually the one who um, I traded with. <laughs> so I actually traded with Johnny Cage. Um, I ended up getting a. So he got a third round pick and my ninth round pick. I was able to get a sixth, a ninth, so we did a swap in the ninth round. I traded back three rounds for this pick, um, but I, here's where I finally got that extra first for next year. So now I'm sitting on an extra first and two extra f- um, seconds for 2024. And, you know, it it was more because I just didn't love the value. I kind of thought about taking Mark Andrews and just pairing him with Kyle Pitts and saying, all right, this mm-hmm. could be fun. But... I just, I don't know. I was kind of nervous about him at the time, and I just didn't think uh, the value. Like, I didn't want to stack two tight ends that early, um, even though it is tight end premium. I don't love the wide receivers that much. Like, there's so much depth at the wide receiver. And then the quarterback, it felt like most of the quarterbacks are gone. And even in super flex, yeah. like, that's where I'm just going to be taking stabs later on yeah. um, in the draft. And I feel like my quarterbacks, I was able to – get a steal on these guys later. So uh um three seven Travis Kelsey three eight TJ Hawkinson little mini tight end run there T Higgins mm-hmm. at three nine Chris Olave three ten Austin Eckler three eleven and ETN at the three twelve. Anything crazy in that round to you that really stands out? Um I mean I kinda I do agree with you with the uh two a pick. You know, I mean I get it, but I don't feel he's I think I would much rather have, you know, it, it's 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 those slew of tight ends, you know. I would probably rather have Higgins, Olave, probably Eckler, and Etienne, you know, over over him at this point. Right. Um. You know, I'm not as worried about the concussions. I still think he's going to come back and he's probably going to play, you know. But I am worried about him getting re-injured. So I mean, I know with this Johnny Cage guy, he he really took a lot of risks in the draft. Right, and um, that's the one thing too, like um. I don't know. <laughs> the hard thing is we're seeing the 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 final product here. Yeah. I don't yep. believe he actually took to a, at this point. Um, he probably you know, didn't. Because, I bet he traded it. Yeah, because I actually traded the 3-6 with him um, originally. So, you know, he had Mark Andrews at first, and I think he traded for – uh, he traded Mark Andrews to Nerd Boy because he kind of wanted to go – he wasn't able to get a tight end early, so – you know, it was kind of a, a pick swap there. So, um, to be fair to Johnny, I, I know that he went uh, the 111 and he went Jonathan Taylor at the 28, but I don't think right. he actually went Tua at the at the uh, the 35 here, but originally. So, um, right. we're seeing a little bit of that, but you know, that's where, yeah, it is definitely interesting how how some of these teams have lined up um, through the first couple yeah, rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just find it interesting when people start you know well like it's it's better to draft in tiers and and to be kind of set up that way Mm -hmm. and i think it's i think it's interesting when people like try to buy up a tier or they and 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 they panic pick somebody yeah 
where where it may not really fit as well as they think it should. Right. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Because so, yeah, that's one of those things where you know <laughs> you have a strategy, but you know you're mm-hmm. you're planning on getting this player here. He goes two picks before you, and it's like, oh no, what do I do now? Like. I didn't have a quarterback here at three six, and that's why I believe I traded because two went right before me. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, I don't love any of these quarterbacks that much to take them here in the third round. At that. Um, so that's why I was willing to trade back three whole rounds, you know, just to to, to pick up an extra first next year because I was like, well, you know, if I suck this year, I'll get Caleb Williams and I'll be all right. So um, exactly. you know, yes. it, it, I I have a little bit of a. a backup plan there um for the quarterback position so i'll just make sure i get all the supporting cast around them uh, but that's where i loved it because so if you're looking at the draft board if you're following along four one i actually got trey lance there i did not originally get trey lance there <laughs> i kept my fourth round pick i was hoping to get trey lance at the four seven um he went at the four one and it, I was so disheartened by that because I was really hoping he'd be able to make it back to me. So this is where trading back early allowed me to trade up. So I traded the 4-7 in a second round pick that I acquired earlier for the, the Justin Jefferson to CeeDee Lamb trade to go get from 4-7 to Trey Lance, which, you know, the 4-7 ended up being the 105. Um, I'd rather have Trey Lance than the 105, so... Mm. For me, it was a win there, right? So that's just an example of how trading back, even though it doesn't feel like a fair trade to go from, you know, Justin Jefferson to CeeDee Lamb for a second round pick, but it did let me go from the 105 to Trey Lance with a second round pick. So, you know, kind of a little swap there that I was able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and for that value for Lance with how he was going last year, you know, I think that's a very good value for him. Oh, yeah. He was a second round pick last year. Uh, he, I think in some leagues he would, he, he, he went, he went at the back end of the first. Yeah. Yeah. So, Wouldn't surprise so, me. So, so, so honestly, I, th- I think that was a good value for him and, and hopefully he's starting for the Niners next year. Yeah, it should be, should be, but I have should a contingency, be. so it doesn't matter. We'll talk on yeah. that here in a little bit. Um, all right. So the one Oh four was at the four two Drake London four three. That was a little surprising to me, to be honest with you. Um, I like Drake London a lot, but he went before DK Metcalf, um, Stephon Diggs, like Traylon Burks. Like there was a lot I'm, of guys I'm, that went. I'm actually, I'm actually okay with that because I think Drake Lund- London's going to be him. I, I, I think he's going to be really good. I think and so too, but yeah, I, I, everyone's worried I, I, about I think, Ritter, right? Like everyone is worried about yeah. Ritter. <sighs> Can he sustain both Pitts and and London? I mean, if not, they're going to get a new quarterback. So I'm not true. super worried about it. So that is true. So you know, you, you know, you know, I don't really think Ritter's going to be their long term, but you know, I, I think they're going to be more pass friendly than what they were last year, and I think they can sustain those two guys. This one was a little surprising to me. Ramondre Steven, Stevenson at the the mm. four four um, went in front of guys like Josh Jacobs, DeAndre Swift, Javante Williams, Najee Harris, Nick Chubb. Um, Dobbins, Henry, like I get that people are very excited about Ramondre, but you know, I was listening to a a mock draft this last Monday and one of the mock drafters took, um, B. John Robinson to the Patriots at I think 15 or 16 or whatever our pick is, um, in this draft. And I was like, dude, one, that's not as egregious as I think people might kind of think it is because New England is just devoid of weapons completely. Um, so Bijan would be a huge addition there. And then you'd have Ramondre and Bijan that can both run like routes as well. Um, but I was like, that would just be hilarious for all the people that are so high on Ramondre Stevenson. Yes. If Bijan Robinson, like because Bijan's so hyped, right? Like everyone, he was the 111 in this in this draft, basically. What does that do to his draft stock if he goes to the New England Patriots? Do you think it's going to have an impact? I think it's going to have uh, an impact. I think it will. I think it's going to help with the new OC. I think that helps a lot. I think so, but too. But it's going to help, but I think it's going to be running back by committee for a little bit there. Dude, people are going to... New England, one, can't be trusted. Two, no, like... No, they can't. <laughs> they cannot be trusted for that because of the committee piece of it. But two... 
the, like new running back for New England has been a a death sentence for fantasy football for years now. So it'll be interesting to see how people react to it. I, I agree with that, and I I I am surprised that they took Stevenson there. I think I, mean, I would probably value him round or two less than that personally. Yeah, I would. Yeah, like I, yeah, I know Najee's been been down and down and out, but I'd rather have all of those guys that I just mentioned: Javante, Najee, Josh Jacobs, even or Swift over Ramondre. So that one was a little egregious to me, but it is what it is. Um, DK Metcalf at five, De- Devonta Smith at four six, the one hundred five was at four seven. My original pick there: um, Stephon Diggs at eight, Jacobs at nine, Swift at ten. Um, uh, excuse me. Pick it up, Dale. Uh, and and then and then at four eleven is 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 the one oh six, and then we got Cooper Cup at four twelve. So you know, I I honestly think most of those guys are pretty suited well there. Um, I think Cooper I Cup really at the four twelve like, is a little risky. A, a, a little it is, but I don't hate it. You know, for, it's definitely a win now move, which this guy, absolutely. um, this guy definitely Looks had like, that a yes. lot early. Um, I mean, the next pick, real quick, we're not going to go into fifth round here. Um, we'll kind of do five through ten probably on the next one. Um, but Devontae Adams was the the five one, so he went Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams, which it, I get it, like very very good players, but man, you are putting yourself on a timer, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, and I agree with that. You know, um, I think with Swift, I'm surprised he didn't go a little higher than that at the four. People are really down on him, like really, they really, bad. they really are. But I think, I mean, I, I mean, I still think Jamal Williams is still going to be there, but I don't think he's going to get the 17 touchdowns like he did no, this last no, no, year. No. It's 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 not going to happen. Like he had like 11 one yard touchdowns. It was insane. Yeah, they. So I mean, DeAndre Swift set him up for like probably eight of those like not even joking where he got them down to the five yard line and then Javante just or not Javante but Jamal just kind of punched it in yeah yeah and he punched it in and 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 that's what he's good for in that role so I mean I mean I would probably draft Swift probably you know probably late third would be a good spot for me personally I mean I would feel more comfortable like would you rather have Swift or ETN I'd rather have Swift yeah, I think I'd rather have it's Swift close. Because, it is close, yeah. but I, I mean, that's a whole round difference though here in this draft. Yeah, it is. It is. I, yeah, I think I'd rather have Swift. Um, I mean, I mean, they both have free risk, but I think I, I think I trust Swift more. Yeah, that's fair. Um, all right, so through four rounds, you know, we'll just kind of quick quick uh, recap. So team number one ended up having Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, and Cooper Cup. Again, this is a guy that was kind of more win now. Um, and once we get later on, once we get to his whole team, um, again, if you're looking at YouTube, I'm highlighting the, the the teams here so you can actually see his whole team. But he went definitely the win now players. They're all very, very old. Um, team number two, I actually like this, this build. Um, he didn't do a ton of trading, but... Early, I thought he did really, really well. Um, later, mid round, that's where a lot of teams that really they they really struggle uh, be, to yes. keep a a coherent strategy in mind, right? Um, but Jalen Hurts at the one two, uh, Kenneth Walker, Garrett Wilson, and T.J. Hawkinson, not a bad group of guys no. there. Very solid. Um, very all, very solid. All pretty young too, for the most yep. part. Um, team three had no trades at all, uh, which is kind of funny. So Mahomes, Christian McCaffrey, Terry Kill, and then DeAndre Swift. What are your thoughts on that one? Um, I like that honestly. I mean, I feel that's that that is really win now. Um, I mean, I'm I am worried about CMC and Hill's age, but I really think. Well, I mean, I mean, the age for CMC is is the running back age, I guess you. Could. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you know, and with and with Tyreek, like he's probably gonna be twenty nine this season. So, I mean, I feel that that's very. I feel I feel he I feel that's a very competitive start to your roster. Yeah, the problem is, <laughs> I always hate these drafts because you don't make any trades, right? So, you're getting older players like McCaffrey and Hill, who are going to be very good. Don't get me wrong; they're going to be very good, but 
you you didn't make any trades at all in this draft, so you know you're just literally aging yourself out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're gonna take older players, at least try and get some future like seconds or third anything. You know what I mean? Like anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, on that, I, I, <clears throat> uh, so I will say for it's for startups. I've, I mean, I've, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not super good at trading in startups because I don't always. I think I think sometimes I struggle with like the round values and how many rounds yeah. I go down, and and that's really it's really hard to equate those properly because you don't sure. know how the board is going to fall in, in in a few rounds and it could go completely sideways. Sure, the Th- that's the whole thing. So, so like, um, and you know, <laughs> you and I are very different when it comes to these because I trade mm-hmm. in every startup. Like I trade back as time. much as I All can. Um, and try and pick up as much draft capital for next year because honestly, in a startup, future picks are never cheaper than when they are in a startup, right? Yep. I cannot get, you know, whatever it was, Mark Andrews for um, let's say whatever the sixth round pick was. Um, who did I get in the sixth round? Um George Kittle, right? I got an extra first for for upgrading George Kittle to Mark Andrews. That's not gonna happen in you know a regular yeah. league, right? Yep. An unknown yep. first. So, yep. um, like that's just the kind of the craziest thing to me. It's it's you know you gotta you gotta look at it and you gotta know what you feel comfortable with, and that just takes practice. But the the one thing for me that I luckily uh, I've always traded down. I there was one time I really traded up, you know, maybe two times. Um, but you kind of got to just see what the 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 trend is in the league. You know, if nobody is really looking to trade up, then you trade up, you know, you go exploit that because if nobody's trading up, you're a party of one. Right. And um, you can get those those more expensive picks cheaper. Right. Where maybe you're yes. only getting, you know, maybe you're only giving up an extra second round pick next year instead of an extra first to go up a half a round or a round or whatever. Um, but when that's the only offer that they get maybe they're more likely to take it kind of thing. So when everyone's zigging, you zag, right? Or when everyone's zagging, you zig. That that's kind of the whole point there. Um, But, you know, you got to do what you feel comfortable with. So I I get that. Um, I do understand Mm -hmm. that. Uh, Team four, so they ended up going with um, Joe Burrow, the 103, Saquon Barkley, and Josh Jacobs through the first four rounds. Not terrible. Um, You know, I don't know. The one I mean, three I mean, is just. I mean, it, it's it, yeah, it's 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 a solid start, but I I would much rather have, you know, I mean, I'm not as as big on Amon Ra as a lot of people are, but I mean, I think I would rather have some of the, uh, some of the other wide receivers yeah, like, there. You know, yeah. I yeah yeah like I think to I'd be fair, he did like he did lose player. out on Garrett Wilson. Like that, I would rather have Garrett, yeah, but yes. um, like yep. T Higgins. For his build, Joe Burrow and T. Higgins would have been the perfect stack there. Yes, it so, would. So you know, it's just I was just shocked because the the tight ends early went so late in a tight end premium. Like I understand that people are down on them and everything, but in a tight end premium, Mark Andrews at three six is That's a nuts, man. Like he's spo- that should steal. be a second round pick. Like Travis Kelsey yep. should be a second round pick in a, in a tight end premium still, even though he's older, right? So yes. the the tight ends I think were the best value of this whole thing. Rookie picks were kind of the biggest um m- most egregious piece of it. Um team 5 here they were a little bit more aggressive um early. They traded up pretty heavily in the second round. Uh they were kind of all over the board in the first few rounds there. <clears throat> but they ended up getting Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Travis Etienne, and, and AJ Brown. Not terrible. Um, heavily yeah. invested on on the running backs there. Yeah. Don't really love that, you know. But in a startup anyway, like Austin yeah, I mean, Eckler, I, mean, I love him, but but only for a year or two. Yeah, right. I know. I know. I agree with that, and I I honestly think that's a. I mean, I I feel he did pretty good with with all those players, and you know, I feel that's a very win now. Win now strategy. Yeah, and it's not terrible too. Like you got ETN, no, you got not. Diggs. So, um, like there's some some longevity to that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my first couple picks. So through four rounds, I ended up with just Trey Lance, CeeDee Lamb, and Kyle Pitts. But I had the extra first and the the two extra seconds. Well, one extra second at this point because I I traded one of them for Lance. But you know, 
very young, <laughs> definitely mm-hmm. very, very yeah. young. Yeah, and, um, and, 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 and it's a very good value. Yes. But it but it's not top It's not win talent. now. No, 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 yes, no. Yes, yes. It could be, but it it's could not. Be. It, 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 really <laughs> could, it really could be if things fall, but. Right. Yeah. Um, all right, so then team number seven. I like this one a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, Justin Fields, Deshaun Watson, Travis Kelsey, and Devonta Smith. Very, very good team. This guy is very, very yes. well built. Um, you know, the team number one was the other guy that I think really went hard for win now. But, you know, you just look at the assets there. Like, Travis Kelsey's older, but he, and he's a tight end, and I get that. Like, Mark Andrews versus Travis Kelsey. But Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams versus Deshaun Watson, Justin Fields, and Devonta Smith. Like, man, there's a lot of potential there with team number seven. Uh, that I quite like. <laughs> no, I, I I agree with that, and I I feel that is extremely solid, you know. And that's something that you know, like if you want to trade Kelsey in a year or two, right? Or, I mean, you could play I mean, him this or, year. Or, or, yeah, yeah, and, and play him this year, and then maybe trade him in the off season. Like right. you could get, you know, good value for him. Still. Yeah, you could probably still get like after this year if he balls out again, you might even still be able to get a first for him in a tight end premium. Yes, like absolutely, the dude's absolutely. just a, he's like a a never ending value machine at this point in his yes. career. Um, team number eight, he ended up going uh, Jamar Chase, Brees Hall, DK Metcalf, and I think it's the one six right. So yeah, I don't know. I don't feel great about that. He has no yeah. quarterbacks yeah. yet. Um, yeah, I mean one I mean, six. You're you're no, probably I'm, not getting one like maybe a Will Levis or something, getting, and that's yeah. just. I mean, I mean, I I could maybe see Anthony Richardson. I don't think so. I don't think so. Not with the other. I mean, the I mean, needs of these as, guys as, in this as, in this as, league. I, I, that's true, but I mean, I would think like in a normal, I guess a normal rookie draft that that would probably be comfortable. But, right. Yes. You know, but uh, yeah, 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 be, yeah. But like for his first four pick or for his first four picks, that does scare me a lot with. With, with like Brees Hall coming off his injury, right? You know, it's it, it's a one six. He's he might get a quarterback. But At least he has DK not. and he has Chase though. Like those guys should be around yeah. for a while. Could be a, yes. a powerhouse squad there. Yes. You know, let's say he adds JSN to that. Yeah, that could be pretty good. You know, at least for a little while. Yep. Um, team number nine here: Lawrence Waddle, um, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and then Ramondre. I don't know. It just kind of hit or miss for I, me. I, 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 I feel he reached on two of those guys with yeah. Amon Ra and Stevenson. And, you know, I, I like, I don't mind Lawrence there. And, and Amon Ra was I, kind I like of him. ridiculously high. Like, I know we didn't uh-huh. talk about that one at the time, but, man, over yeah, Garrett Wilson, would, Higgins, yeah, Olave. I would, yes. I mean, I think he's a round and a half, two <clears throat> rounds too high. I, I mean, I, 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 not, I, do yeah. like Amon, I do like Amon Ra. Don't get me wrong, but... I, I mean, we haven't seen anything from JMO though. That's the problem. Like, if Jameson right. Williams is that guy, that could that could just kill him. Really hurt his value. value. Um, team number ten here: Kyler Murray, uh, the one-two. So probably Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, um, Chris Olave, Drake London. He went for pretty much a lot of youth as well. Youth. Um, I actually like his his lineup here. You know, with Kyler being out this year, it, mm-hmm. he was able to. The, he was one of the guys that I think stepped to a specific strategy early. You know, he didn't really trade much early, which is fine. But he started to kind of move around the board a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, I think that he was able to really capitalize on a single minded vision early on in this right. one, uh, pretty well. Right. Um, if. If if Kyler didn't get hurt, what would you have done at one six? Like, would you have taken one of those quarterbacks, or or no? Or I probably still would have traded back, just knowing me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> um, fair enough. Fair um, enough. Yeah, like it's not that it wouldn't be worth it. Like, if I was going to take a quarterback, I was going to take Fields anyway. Like, you know, my love yeah. of Fields, so yep. I was going to take Fields over Murray anyway. But. Um, you know, I just mostly wanted to get the the ball rolling to get those extra picks right. early. So while I could, um, yep. that was kind of the whole thing there. But no, Kyler, I don't think I, I do not think one ten for Kyler is that egregious, um, even with the injury. So I don't think it was too bad there. All right, team eleven. He got the one hundred one at eleven there. Um, Jonathan Taylor, Tua, 
and T Higgins. Um, and then, so he actually, he actually had an extra pick there in the fifth, in the first four rounds. You know, I only had three, he had five. Um, so he had then the one Oh four as well. So one Oh one, one Oh four Higgins, Tua and Taylor. What do you think about this? Mm, thanks. Um, I think he's punting to next year. <laughs> I'm kind I'll of be honest. Kind, I don't uh, yeah, know, dude. Jonathan I, Taylor makes it tough, though, right? Like it Higgins does, and Taylor. It does. Like it's such a weird. It does. It's a. It, it's a. It is. This is one of the ones where I don't think it's very cohesive. That's the uh, the biggest problem with it. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. It doesn't. Like he's trying to do everything. He's trying to. <laughs> You you that's why trying to cover all of his bases. Yeah, you you got to pick a lane. Like through four rounds, I like when we go back to my picks: C.D. Lamb, Kyle Pitts, Trey Lance. I did not think that I was going to be able to to really compete through four rounds. I was not going to try and win the championship this year after four rounds. But I stuck to my strategy. All of those guys are twenty three or younger. Like they're all Mm -hmm. super super young, very high upside guys that I got for value. Right. So, you know, it's just sticking to a strategy is huge. Right. Um, right. I mean, I, I think for him, it would have made the difference if he didn't trade Andrews for Tua. Yeah. Whatever that trade yeah, was he, like, I was trying to yeah, find yeah. what that how, trade how, was. However, but. however that was, I think he would have been better off if he kept Andrews not and not traded for Tua and then just use one of those draft picks on a quarterback. Man, that, that, that pick that, has been all over the board. So it looks like, um, it looks pretty funny. Um, he so the guy that has Mark Andrews now is not even the guy that he got the pick oh from. Oh my god! So oh. that's just kind of funny. Or like he's not even the one that drafted him. So, um, but right. it was the so it was a two swap. So it was with Jay Clegg, um, wherever the heck that guy is. Where is he at? So it was it was AJ Brown for um, Jonathan Taylor, which is kind of weird. Um, that's an odd one, man. Uh, and then the third, so Tua for um, Austin Eckler. It was just weird, right? And then there was a, a third and a fourth, um, or sorry, a second and a third round pick in 2024 swap. So, you know, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Um, that is odd. Man, and then, yeah, so it, it this guy didn't make a ton of trades, but yeah, it was, uh, he made very interesting trades. Yeah. To say the yeah, least. definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, the problem is the trades that he made didn't again, weren't cohesive. So right. it is what it is. Right, it? Um, all right. Then the last guy here, the 12 team. And again, he kind of was somebody who pivoted later on. Um, he was able to get Justin Jefferson, get Dak Prescott, but originally he had Lamar Jackson, um, and a couple other guys there. So he was kind of pivoting all around the board after, you know, the picks were already taken. But through four rounds, he has Justin, or yeah, Justin Jefferson, Dak Prescott, and the 105. It's not terrible. Um, you'll really see his team start to fill out a little bit in the mid rounds. But yeah, any thoughts there on his? Uh, I mean, I, I feel that's a pretty solid start. Like, that's not too bad. Um, you know, I, I think not having. I I mean I I I feel Jefferson and Prescott are decent starters, are like are like decent early pieces. Starters. Yeah, like cornerstones. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you know I think I would feel better if he had somebody in the third, but happen. Right. So, I mean I would have felt better if I would have had somebody in the in the first, but yeah, it is what it true. is. <laughs> no, I, I I can't blame him. He he's actually set himself up like um. With with future draft picks and everything, um, like just for for reference, so everybody out there is aware. He 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 has um, oh one two three four four first round picks next year. So you know he's doing pretty good. He was able to work the board pretty well, um, even though like much better than me. I I stopped trying. I, you know this guy was going to everybody for every single player trying to sell him. So. Um, he put in a lot more work than me, but yeah, not, not too shabby for him. So, um, any last thoughts on, on the board for now? And then we can, we'll be back to talk about the mid rounds. You know, we'll probably talk four through four through 10, and then we'll kind of, you know, talk on the last couple rounds a little bit later. 
Yeah, I mean, I think overall, I think the majority of the teams have have fairly cohesive cornerstone pieces, but there are some, but other teams have interesting roster. So, yep, yep, definitely. So we'll see. And that's again, I think um, rounds five through ten are really where. A lot of teams are made or broken. Um, that's where teams really start to fall apart or kind of stick together. So um, we'll see how it kind of goes there in the next one. But any last thoughts before we get out of here? Nope. My throat is killing me. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back um, again. You know, if you're listening to this on Friday, hopefully we'll be able to get the next one out on Saturday. We're going to we're going to break this up into three episodes. Um, and then next week when I'm fully healthy, we're going to be getting into the coaching changes and the dynasty impacts we expect from those, uh, should be a good time. So thank you guys again for listening and, um, expect two episodes tomorrow on Saturday for the mid rounds and the late rounds. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Have a good night.